Hey everyone, welcome to the 1804 Show, Chapter 2. I'm your host, Dollar Will, and this is episode 607. And this is my third time repeating this, because I don't know why. I guess my Facebook tripping right now. You know, shout out to all the viewers. We about to have a great show. One of my big brothers coming to the platform tonight. And oh yeah, if y'all want to donate, you know what I'm saying, cash up, dollar sign, the 1804 show. Small, medium, or large, whatever y'all want to do. But yeah, he's in here, so he's going to break him up in here. Oh, uh, hey, Mercedes. <laughs> he's so sweet. But yeah, I'm going to bring him up in here. Yeah, I know, I know. Let's get you in here, man. Let's get this started. Let's get this on the road. <laughs> I'm high. Yeah. Yeah. Must be a bad connection. You know, I hope we can do this episode because i really been going crazy. I've been on the grind and stuff like that. But yeah, make sure y'all go, go subscribe to the channel, man. The same as in the description, you know. Make sure y'all look out for brothers and stuff. A lot of great content, a lot of great content coming up. So y'all make sure y'all go support your boy. So we gonna try to figure this out. Turn my yeah, probably gotta turn my Wi-Fi off. So. Yeah, can y'all hear me? Can you hear me? I'm good. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's just a crazy night. Like, none of my lives went to work. So I don't want people to think it's me. You know, it's not me. But yeah, I turned my Wi-Fi off. Hopefully, it works. Oh my God, <laughs> that's saying break you like crazy, huh? Damn, but it's not me. I, I ain't doing anything. Hey, sister. Okay, okay, okay. Bro, can you hear me? That's all that matters. Shout out to my sis, Terry. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We trying to get Coach on board. I don't think he does this type of thing on this type of live, so. We gonna get him on board. We gonna get him together. But yeah, bro, just um, accept the request to my live, and we gonna we gonna get this worked out. We gonna do this. We gonna finally get this popping because I've been waiting all day for this. gonna work i ain't had this problem in so long i don't know what the hell is going on but i ain't had this problem in so long so Okay, there we go. <laughs> What's up, bro? What's up, man? I had to go uh cell phone instead of my computer. Oh yeah, man, that's probably what was going on. Cause, cause you gotta, I guess you gotta join live through your phone and not your computer. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I see it now. <laughs> What's up, bro? 
Man. What's up, man? Damn, we, we almost had it. We almost had it. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, come back, coach. Yeah, come back, coach. Yeah, we gotta get coach back in here. We almost had it, so we we, we gonna get him. We gonna get him back in here. Almost had it. But I don't quit on the episode, so that's that's me. I don't quit on nothing. I think it's like, like a connection problem. First, man, shout out to y'all, man. We just gonna get them back, back in here. You know, I, I ain't going nowhere. I ain't. I don't quit. I don't give up on my episode. So I don't give up on no show. So we all get them back in here. I don't give up on my episode. Okay, you so better. I don't give up on no show. So <laughs> hey, how come I can hear myself? Man, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you great. Loud and clear. All right, I'm going to turn this computer off then. Yeah, yeah, that, that computer don't like me. <laughs> Man, I don't know what's going on with it, but I'm shutting it down. Yeah, that's, that's what's up. What's happening, little bro? Man, nothing, man. Man, just couldn't wait to hmm. to do this, man. I've been waiting all day, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've been waiting. I'm a little tired, but you know how it goes. Oh. Long day of first basketball practice. Spend time with the family. Now I'm here, bro. Do what we got to do. Oh, yeah, no doubt, man. I just wanted to just... No, thank you for coming on the show oh, yeah. and just everything else, man, because you're a great, outstanding guy. And I always tell everyone that, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. we have a mutual respect for each other mm-hmm. and we need more of us that's doing, like, the same thing to just come together and don't have any animosity towards each other. Really? But but I always look at just anything I do. I just always feel like I got to be the best. Mm-hmm. And, and that's just, you know, watching Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan interviews, you know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. even though they had mutual respect for each other, but when they was playing, it was a different that's, story. So, right. <laughs> And it's supposed to be like that, bro. Mm-hmm. If, you ain't, if you ain't competitive out there, man, then you ain't got to be disrespectful with it. You just got to be competitive, and that should be, I mean, it's in my nature. You know what I'm saying? I got nothing but respect for guys like yourself, what you do, what uh, Yacht Life Chronicles do, Radiant Thoughts. You know what I'm saying? These these platforms here locally that I follow, but at the same time, I'm going to support y'all, and at the same time, I'm always trying to build, and I watch y'all, listen to y'all, and then I know where I got to go, too. But one of the biggest things I love about it is we all got different platforms and we all talk different topics. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's just that wide stream that we got here in our city. So I, I love it, bro. And I love what you do and I appreciate it. You know, from yeah. the first day I met you at um Yaki event that he had. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I knew something was being good about you and I was like, man, I gotta follow up with him and Matter of fact, we end up working at the same spot, so that's cool. <laughs> I know, right? That, that was just, that, it was no coincidence, man, because I really be needing good people just around me, because oh, I'm yeah. a good dude, and, and you are who you hang around, so it's just really important <laughs> that just with people um, who come to me and stuff and ask me for advice or just want to start a platform of themselves, and I ask them, who are they friends? Because your friends yeah. and your circle is going to define your success, you know? And people just ain't ready for the um, sacrifice that comes with building a platform or just doing anything. Because if you're trying to do something that you 
want to do or you trying to pursue something, it's going to be some stuff you have to let go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and that's the truth too, man, because everybody ain't got your same dream and your same passion. You know, and I respect people that even their cats that I hang around, but when it comes to me doing my business with the More Than The Coach podcast and the Mr. and Mrs. Marshall podcast, man, hey, I look at that first, you know what I'm saying? Business, business, and bull is bull. Simple and plain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um, how about you, like, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself as far as, like, um, like besides the podcast, like, what was, like, your dream job? Like, what you wanted to do before you discovered what, where you was good at? Man, I always wanted to retire in the military, bro. I'm going to be real with you. Um, after doing eight years in the Army, going to war, standing in uh, uh, Iraq for over a year and a half, my mind changed. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to come home and, you know, because I ain't had no family, no kids. So I was like, man, I got to have a legacy behind. So at that point, I left, got out, you know, chilled out, had a good time with life for a while. And I met the right person, man, and settled down and had a family. So one of my biggest goals, I always wanted to be a father and be the best father I could be. You know what I'm saying? But in the back of my mind, coaching was always there. You know, I, I knew I loved sports, but I wasn't a basketball player, you know, but I knew everything about hoops. And um, like you said, Matt, uh, Jordan and Kobe, magic was my idol. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So... I knew I wanted to be a coach, and, you know, God blessed me with a son, and it took off from there. <laughs> when, he, when he was old enough to start playing ball, man, I got some of his little friends together and started a basketball program called FOH in our city, man, and ooh, 30 years later, now I'm coaching high school ball at Bridgeport. You know, so that, that, that was always my dream, being a coach, man. Yeah, so not being a former player, that did you, did you um, caught any type of like flack or, or people try to play with your credibility about coaching a sport oh, yeah. that you ain't never played? Oh yeah, a lot of people will do that still to this day. <laughs> Rip rap, you know, talking about because you didn't play the sport. I mean, you don't know the sport, but if mm -hmm. you love the sport, you do research on the sport, and it's just like doing the job, man. You go to clinics, you go learn. You know, matter of fact, tonight one of my kids said to me, like, man, coach, you come up with new stuff all the time. I said, look, I learn just like y'all learn. You know, I mean, I can't be one of the best coaches if I don't go to school or put myself in the clinic and go get better, you know, teaching from other coaches that's, you know, been doing it. But I'm going to be real with you. I don't give a damn about what people say, man. Yeah. I'm going a, I'm to a let them talk. One thing I know, you gotta have thick alligator skin in this business, man. And I've been doing it for a long time. It's just, you know, sometimes you up on that mountain, sometimes you gotta come back down. And right now, the way things going, I'm down, but I ain't never out. And we gonna climb right back to the top again. You know, so I look at it like that, man. I don't worry about what they say, but you do have them out here that's talking. Oh yeah, of course, no doubt, man. And and just with me, like, on my path or whatever, mm -hmm. I block the noise out. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's really just be a lot of fear. Yeah. They fear what they don't understand. And what they don't understand is <laughs> how a man like us or a man like us mm -hmm. that comes from a city that's considered small, everybody mainly knowing each other and stuff, and they don't understand or they haven't seen mm -hmm. a whole lot of men that's confident, that have a, a never say die attitude. That's right. And that's very optimistic, that speak and water himself. Hmm. They, they look at that, that's crazy. And I love it, you know, I love to be called crazy because I had manifested everything to this point. Because mm -hmm. I never really um, set myself short or to doubt myself. Anything um, was 
meant to be is meant to be was not meant to be. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to move on to the next one until I yeah. accomplish something. But it just, everybody love you when you win, mm. and they, they don't like you when you lose. So, <laughs> yeah, so it's just one of those things, bro, like, um, just, you know, following you and stuff like that for as long as I've known you since the summertime or whatever. Um, I just really respect your platform and just the evolution of it, say. Appreciate it. Yeah, no, no problem, man. You know, feeling mutual, as <laughs> I bet, but it's just, when you um, starting something, it's just, um, everybody just think that, oh, you gonna get just notoriety, success, mm. and this and that, but it takes progress, it takes time, you know what I'm saying? Really? <laughs> You got one thing I learned, bro, especially in this podcasting game, you got to take the little things as big victories. You know what I'm saying? Like me and my wife, we just completed our 25th um, episode, you know, in two seasons. And, okay. you know, the little streaming platform we use sent me a congratulations thing on it, man. And I um, hosted that, man. Those are those are little wins, but they big victories, you know, in my eyes. It's like, okay. Then we got the little analytics about it. Michigan, of course, we get a lot of views in there. But man, when you see Africa, you see Germany, you see China, I'm sitting back like, damn, we got people over here checking us out. So that keeps you motivated, man. They want you to keep going. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, even the big uh, following in Texas, Houston, Texas, and then Chicago. And a lot of that was because of a couple people I interviewed from them areas. So now people following, you know, and I, I just love that. So one thing I, I learned in this game we in, you gotta celebrate the little, little things too, man. Yeah. And I and I, I respect that. You know, we might have five or six viewers on doing the show, but then after a week of advertising and putting stuff out there, you see it climbing, 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 and that's what it's all about. Oh no doubt, man, and and every episode. Is a win because yeah. a lot a lot of times it's just you know you be tired you don't feel like doing it but you have a commitment not only to yourself that's right but you have a commitment to the fans and stuff because mainly a lot of times I didn't feel like sitting here and talking for over an hour or two hours depending on who it is mm -hmm. and, but I made it a commitment and I made a promise to just the fan base and stuff and. Yeah, it just, you know, no one really understands the stress and um, really just the, the deterioration of it all, you know, just being discouraged and just hoping that, you know, you become uh, better than where you were in the last episode and stuff, because I'm still ironing out the kinks, as they say, <laughs> no matter how many episodes I did, because yeah. I... Cause I still get nervous i still have like stage yep. fright but it don't look like it but <laughs> oh yeah but my gift is bigger than me you know yeah. what I'm saying? and i just explained to people which is how you know you gotta allow your gift to to use you <laughs> but use you in a positive way not in a negative way because you sure. can lose your gift at any moment yeah. if you're not yeah, exercising it that is the truth too, man. Yeah. I know I got a I got a big one tomorrow night on the more than the coach one. I interview uh Jacob Brown, you know, and uh he's a bridge for a long, but he's a big time motivational speaker, you know, travel all over the world, you know, so that should be pretty good. I'm nervous as heck about it, but yeah. at the same time, because like you said, man, you, you just gotta go and you gotta do it. When I'm interviewed uh Des Ferguson for Moneyball. You know, you sitting there and I'm like, wow, I got this multi-millionaire cat on my doggone podcast talking to him. You know, even though I knew him outside what he was doing when he first started, to, I mean, even blow it up. And, you know, you just, it's, it's a blessing, you know, that you can talk to people and just get their point of view and insight and then for them to bless your platform, you know, it's real powerful. You know, it's yeah. something that you showed me at, and it was like, you gotta step out, man. Go after those people. 
Go, mm -hmm. All they can do is say yes or no. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and even, like I said, watching you and I sit back like, man, that's cool. Then I see you got one of the um, Sub-Zero people <laughs> coming. I'm like, <laughs> you had a power range to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, that's, that's big. You know what I'm saying? Right here from our city, doing it like that. You know? Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's funny because... I, I still can't believe that how I landed that, you know, and mm -hmm. but at the same time, I just always say that it's always more to come. It's always more people mm -hmm. that need more topics to talk about, more episodes to do. So I never settle on just, you know what I'm saying, speaking to one legend and then, okay, I'm through for the end of the year <laughs> and stuff like that. I got nothing to prove, but... I just always say that it's always more yeah. to bring to the platform or just bring to the masses and everything. Because one story and one interview can blow you up and so mm -hmm. and that where you at right now, you know what I'm saying? So you can possibly meet somebody in the Hall of Fame or somebody that's actively playing just mm -hmm. by being consistent and sticking to it and, yeah. and that's what it's about because people who are consistent and people who are mastering their craft respect others who's doing the same thing mm -hmm. so you're gonna get there man i can i can see you on like fox news espn <laughs> one day you know because mm. you think big you get big and that's you think right small, you get small and that's i ain't right. thinking like that i ain't thinking how right. others want me to think no, nah, you can't, man. And I'm, it's like you said, I'm looking at getting my own studio, having this and having that, you know. So right now I got some signs of a small basement, but nah, I want bigger than this so I can bring guests to the place and sit down and, you know, take it on the road. So you're right, man. We got to think big, man, to make, you know, to make big things happen. You know, but you yeah. keep doing what you're doing, bro, because it's inspiring the old head like me. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? For real. Man, man you ain't old. You, you better, man. You get better, dog. That's how I look at it. I like yeah. that. Yeah, because I just respect people who, who, even though we may not talk the same things and stuff like mm -hmm. that, you made me want to go into sports commentary mm -hmm. and stuff like that because I really want to talk about Wilt Chamberlain and all the first black NBA players because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I feel like they're not mentioned as much yeah. as the people who integrated in the major leagues, you know, like Jackson mm -hmm. Robinson and all them stuff. But it's always a first person. And I was going to talk about uh, uh, Sweetwater and mm -hmm. stuff because his story is remarkable. He was a great athlete and Earl Lloyd and, and others. So yeah, yeah. I was going to really just go into that field, but also just implement it in history and stuff. Oh, yeah. Because it's important that we know these things because nowadays we are entitled to have these things. So we, we just be arrogant about certain legends and this and that. But it always was a first. It's always the people that start. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And they don't get the recognition, man. And it's sad you know i mean it's cool to have like the legends that and engulf the sport but you gotta yeah. pave the way for the ones or just pay homage to the ones that made it possible because yes, without them it would have been no jordan would have been no you in it would have been no irison would have been nobody that's true that's why you know I always look at like wow they don't never talk about Bill Russell when they talk about all these rings. Yeah. You know, yeah, Jordan got six, Brown got his, all of them got this, but Russell got 11. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they don't talk about that. So no. why he ain't up there with the goats, you know what I'm saying? So but like you said, it's a different era, you know, like kids hate that. I talk about magic. I tell them magic my goat. And yeah. Like, Man, magic ain't do this. Or, oh, that's for sure. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if I'm in the game, you will know, you know what happened and why he is who he is. So, yeah, it's it's cool though. But you're right. I like that if you you know step on that and put that out there, man. We need more history on that. You know? 
Oh, no doubt, man. And, and, and then what I like about, well, what I always loved about Iverson, because Iverson, my goal, mm. and just, just the fact that he was so fast, like, his speed was just so underrated, man, like, because he was a quarterback and stuff like yeah. that. But it was just like, his speed, nobody could catch him in a yeah. foot race. Just amazing. And then the fact, like, he changed the how we dress in the NBA now. Yeah. Like, nobody was, he did. was swear, nobody was having braids like he was or tattoos and wearing yeah. what he was wearing. They had to change the rules because of him. That's true. So, and it didn't work neither. It lasted <laughs> but it didn't. It's a video of him on YouTube. I just watched it early this morning. And he talked about, he don't call them goats. He called them his killers. Yeah. And he uh, named Kobe and Mike. He named Shaq. He named Magic. He said Bron. And then they was like, why you ain't putting yourself in there? He said, no, nah, I'm going to respect everybody before me. And he was like, these are, you know, in his eyes, goats or killers. You know, so that was kind of cool watching that. You know that how he paid homage to people, man, and everything. You know, even though his boys was like, "No, nah, you on that list." He know he on that list, but he just that humble enough that he gonna give everybody else theirs first. You know, I think he even yeah. Curry on there too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just and that's what it's about, man. Paying homage and just respecting your elders. Saying we lost that sense of respecting our elders nowadays because yeah. I know that even though you coach basketball you pretty much the only father that some of your kids that you coach know that is true you know you are put in that life you know what I'm saying but even at the same being in that bro I explained it to them you know you got it dad that regardless of being your life or not you know, it's cool to look at me as a father figure, but I, I like to take the big brother turn. Yeah. You know, I'm your big bro. When you want to talk to somebody, you having a hard time, you know, and that's that's why I name my stuff more than the coach, you know what I'm saying? Because people don't see the other stuff we do outside coaching. They see you on the sideline yelling, screaming, oh, he crazy, this and that. <laughs> they don't see the, you know, they don't see the phone calls when a kid needs to cry and talk to you about some things going on, or you get a phone call, coach, I'm hungry. Can you help me? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Or, hey, coach, I'm hurting. I need gas money. You know, you might not even have a lot, but guess what? I'm going to make sure that little cat get back and forth to school because he got a little ride. They'll you know, meet me here at the gas station, wop, wop. You know, so people don't see all that other stuff, though. But I, I, I think it's a calling that God put on my life. To be around kids and helping kids out, man. You know, so uh, that's one of the reasons why I do what I do, man. As a coach, you know, I like being that father figure slash big brother type. But, you know, it's it's a good thing. Yeah, man. And I'm just really speechless because it's just the small things matter as the big things as well. Yeah. But you just never know, like, just giving somebody a few dollars or mm. just taking time out of your day to hear someone just needs some consoling. Like, mm. we don't forget about those things mm. as young men. And it, it, it was cool because I was able to interview my mentor, Brian Pruitt, mm. on pretty much last week. Okay. And here's a man that that I knew when I was 14 years old. And just the fact, like, you never know what can happen, what you can become. Mm -hmm. It's just to have, have a show. And then just by bringing my mentor mm. onto my platform yeah. and stuff, like, because I was really excited, man. I was just really telling everybody, like, I'm going to have my mentor on my show. How many people can say that? And yeah. people were like, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's just growing up, man, just in the city, it's just a whole lot of, 
it's a whole lot, lot of, um, I think everybody just plays a part and is down in our city, but our city good. You know, I feel like we just want a normal particular city, you know? It's just smaller, but bigger cities, I feel like, you know, it's a lot worse because it's more demographic. But yeah. just everyone who's from a small town doesn't have perspective as far yeah. as that. Because everybody just see, uh, okay, let me see if the grass greener. And then when they get to the grass, they find out like, oh, it's not as greener as it was back home. Yeah. And it's going to be harder. Yeah. <laughs> be hard. You got to grind harder. You don't know people. It's like you got to start all over, you know. I tell everybody about Saginaw, man. It's a beautiful place. It's rough around the edges, but it's home. I love it. You know what I'm saying? And and I'd have been all over, you know. And it's just something about being home, man. It's a good thing. I think now that I'm getting older, I'm ready to go somewhere where it's warmer. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A little bit more water around me. But at the same time, Saginaw always going to be home. And, you know, it's, it's a beautiful place, bro. It's what you make it, for real. You know, and that's anywhere where you go, though. But, you know. Yeah, so tell us about the military, like, as far as, like, your experiences. Like, <laughs> so when you got there, like, was you, like, skeptical of it? or you was prepared or you were just like kind of on autopilot at that time? Man, I was 17 when I first went. And the crazy part about it is, bro, I wanted to go. Matter of fact, I graduated in 88 and majority of my class, probably about 80% of my class went to the military. You know what I'm saying? Back in them days, it was, you had just two options. You go to college or you go in the military. And I knew as a freshman, I was going to military. My pops was in the military. Mm-hmm. And of course that was my role model and hero. So I wanted to follow in his footsteps. And I just knew I wasn't going to college. I knew that from the rip. And um, so when I went, man, it was it was shock. It was a culture shock. You know, when you first get there, man, you you get treated worse than the worst. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I mean, the the mind games, bro, that's played with you, you know, a weak person, you're going to break. I ain't going to hold you up. But um, other than that, man, after you get through them six to eight months of uh, boot camp, your training, and then you go to your job. And it was, it was just like life, bro. You know, you going to work eight to four, nine to five. Get to go travel, do what you want to do, have a good time, meet a whole lot of different people, man. So that was that was part about it, the cool part about it, you know, especially depending on your jobs you had. Now there were some people had jobs where you was out in the field 300 out of 365 days, so your life was a little different. But if you was in the, you know, some of the easier jobs, supplies, and all that kind of stuff, man, you kind of had it easy. You know, um, but like I tell kids now, if you go to the military, I know it's totally different, you know, from when I went in. But man, you, you earned everything and every penny that you made, you earned. It. Mm-hmm. You know, so it was a grind, it was a challenge, but it was really mental. Everything was really mental, man. Yeah. You know, it was days, you know, they'd break a brother down. But other than that, man, <laughs> you know, it was cool. <laughs> You know, I mean, I, I had my one moment. I left a wall locker open, man, and drill sergeant came in that room, found out it was mine, man, and he, he said something to me that I ain't never heard nobody say to me before. And I snapped on it, and I don't mm-hmm. know what I did to that for, bro. My man made me call my mama, told her what I said. She kind of like, like made a little smart remark to me. And after that, <laughs> Hey, I had to shape up, man, or ship out. Because I was a knucklehead when I went in, though. But I enjoyed it, though. It made me who I am today. 
And you know, and it helped me be the man I am because of what I went through in the military. Yeah, it's not, and I'm happy you say that because, you know, we, we go in there or just anything or because I just explain to people that everything in life is mental. Mm-hmm. And you should always put your emotions last, but mental <laughs> is first in yeah. everything. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, because that's why I live and carry myself the way that I do because yeah. I have been in a mental prison mm-hmm. and that that breaks me because mm-hmm. I'm the one that's always like the um, advice person to people yeah I just look at things from a different perspective now and what they tripping about maybe car accident to them but to me, it's just like hitting your big toe on the edge of the bed or something. <laughs> like it's gonna hurt, yeah. but it's gonna get better yeah. like in five or 10 minutes. But yeah, and, and that's what it is. And growing when I did become poor enough, it just allowed me to just see things from a different scope and realize like, okay, I have some accountability in all of this. Mm-hmm. And what, once we realize that we can get a lot of stuff done, a lot of stuff can be fixed. And mm-hmm. some things can't be fixed, but we can just fix ourselves mm-hmm. and stuff like that and really realize that, okay, what can I do be- or what could I have done better to to have fixed that but okay it happened then or whatever like that but now I'm going to do better because I know better now and stuff and I know the outcomes and, and I, I wanted to ask you um, so do you um feel like the like the youth could be you know safe around here I believe they can man I mean one thing about working with kids and seeing a lot of these kids man they can read bullshit you yeah. feel me and if you full of it man these kids should see that and the thing is man you just got to be genuine with them one thing I do and I'll be honest man I tell the kid up front I'm gonna give you to you I'm gonna give it to you 100% cut Unraw, raw. You know what I'm saying? I'm on that Tony Montana. You know, either you you gonna you gonna hit it, you gonna okay, feel good, or you gonna break. It. You know, I'm never gonna sugarcoat nothing, man. I'm gonna always tell them the truth because as a kid myself growing up, I couldn't stand when adults lied to me. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing I always said. And when I started coaching, I'm gonna keep it real with these kids. So I believe a lot of our kids can be saved, man. But it's just about, as adults, man, we have to be true to these kids. And if it means you hurting their feelings, man, telling them the truth, I advise you to go ahead and be truthful and hurt them. But at the same time, let me go back to that mental part. If I can yeah. tear them down, I got to be able to build them back up, too. Yeah. You know what I'm I just ain't going to tell him what's true, hurt his feelings, man, and then walk away. I'm gonna tell him why I'm telling him the truth, you know. And I believe if more of us can do that, man, I believe we can help him. But I do see it's a lot of us that people out here that's trying to help. I think some of them are genuine, but then on the back end, I see some that's trying to help that I don't think really genuine about it. You know what I'm saying? And I, and like I said, if I can sit back on the outside and watch and see that. These kids see the same thing too. You know what I'm saying? So, me personally, I pray for them all the time. And I believe we can help and save these kids. For real. Oh, no doubt. Yeah. And and I always use like the super friends analogy <laughs> and stuff. It's just how, you know, you have Batman, you have Superman, Aquaman, <laughs> Wonder Woman, and all. All of them who yep. um, 
had their separate powers, but they all came together mm. under one roof at the end That's of the right. episode. And and I just, just try to explain to people that I'm just a human being and I'm not no superhero. Because mm-hmm. you're not going to stress me out like that. You ain't going to put too much <laughs> strain on me. But I'm a realist. And even with you helping the community, you also have to hold the community accountable mm-hmm. and, and, and just let them know what's responsibility that they play in everything. And, and just doing this show, man, I realized I hurt more adults than children <laughs> in this whole ordeal, you know. But, but just like my question to you is just uh, what are like more of your goals that you want to do because I know that like yes you coaching and yes you're doing a podcast so do you have any other oh, yeah. adventures that you want to do to be honest with you bro I want a youth center but I want a youth center where it's more than just basketball you know what I'm saying it's about life skills it's about teaching them how to do things finding jobs even the home where we got less fortunate kids where they can go and stay man and have mentors helping them out and doing things for them showing them how to go live and be an adult on their own those are some of my bigger goals that i have and future plans that you know i will see come true sooner than later you know what i'm saying so that's some of the things that i really want to do with when it comes to my personal feelings and as well as helping our kids you know yeah that's dope man and let me know when you um, get that pop popping, man. Oh, yeah. Because I want to assist. Oh, yeah. Because you know? I just really love that. Because hmm. there's a lot of people, shoot, a lot of grown people don't know how to tie a tie, don't know how to fill out a resume, a cover letter, yeah. and stuff like that. So it's really important that we have those type of organizations and mm-hmm. seminar on that yep. type of stuff. That's true. And um, also, man, I, again, like, not only that I, I respect you as a man, but I also respect you as someone who is an advocate. Because hmm. <laughs> this is not easy, man. Put yourself out here and and when you put yourself out here, you know, you really realize, like, okay, well, I'm not the minority, but I'm also the majority. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. anybody who step out their comfort zone will always have my respect. Because yeah. this, this ain't easy. This hard. <laughs> Tell me about it. For real. It is. Yeah. You know, it's just you got to just stay strong, man. And. You know, like you said, whatever you believe in, have faith in it, man. And, you know, always give it to me. I give it to God and let God lead me, bro. I ain't perfect. I ain't saying I'm perfect. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, bro, I, I let God lead me and show me the way. You know what I'm saying? And this is what he told me I got to be doing. And that's with kids. So that's what I'm doing, trying to be the best positive influence I could be. You know, and like we talked about earlier, man, the hell what people going to say, I ain't doing it for them. You know what I'm saying? And that's just me. For real. That's what's up, big bro, man. And do you have, have any other um, upcoming plans to tell us about? Man, um, it's just, uh, like I said, right now I'm going to um, cap off the last of 2023 with the podcast more than the coach podcast me and my wife got some things she won't let me say them about what we're gonna do with the mr and mrs marshall podcast mm-hmm. and she says she don't want everybody to know right now but we do got some plans in 2024 man that's gonna take us to the next level you know with that you know and um, we're gonna ride that way man and um i'm just right now just trying to um Take care of them things. Take care of my family, man, and be the best man I can be. For real. No doubt, man. And oh yeah, do me a favor. 
Jasper, can you send me your intro so yep. I can just add it into this episode yep. and stuff? Yep. Okay. And that, uh, <laughs> that intro, that's by um, my little brother Reggie Baldwin, too, man. Okay. You know? Yeah, that's Reggie Baldwin. Um, it was a song he had had it for a while. Then I was like, man, and my wife need an intro theme song, and boom, he gave me that song, man, and that was pretty big because I know he had uh, Alexander O'Neill and Sherelle who mm-hmm. wanted that song, and then it's gonna be played in a couple two B movies and everything, so that's pretty big, and we got it as our intro on the podcast, so. I respect that. My little bro Ridge hooked us up with that. Yes. Shout out to him, man. And yeah. I, like I said, I just love y'all. Y'all chemistry yeah. and stuff like that. And <laughs> and it's just really hard to find people who actually enjoy and love what they do and stuff. Yeah. And like I, like I said, I just love what y'all do. I'm going to make sure that I spread the word to y'all platforms and stuff like that and so people can find y'all that's appreciate it stuff. but yeah yes, man you're gonna have to interview me the, uh, next so yes sir i'm gonna <laughs> have to get you on as a matter of fact in 2024 january we're gonna get you on more than the coach podcast oh yeah you know man what I'm <laughs> got to that up for real i mean that's <laughs> the only way we gotta be though bro we gotta help each other out man me and yacht did that you know what i'm saying and i know i'm gonna be getting on uh Kente Parker, uh, a Radiant Thoughts show, you know, and hey, like I said, man, it's, that's what we're supposed to do, network. Hopefully we can get uh, all of us, get Draymond on the show, man. He one of the reasons why I kind of started doing that, man, you know what I'm saying? Watching him do his podcast during the season, I thought that was cool as heck for him to talk to people go after the games and crap like that, so... We gotta, we gotta keep doing it, man, and uh, most definitely we're gonna make that happen. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure, man. But yeah, again, man, thank you for coming on, bro. And yes, sir. And and again, like we gonna talk and everything. We gonna collab some more and stuff. All right. And I appreciate you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thanks, bro, for having me, man. It's an honor. I salute you, man. And you keep doing what you're doing, and don't let nobody stop it, bro. For real. Oh, no doubt. Likewise. Yes, sir. All right, man. Well, I'll be seeing you around the job. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, bro. Talk to you later. All right. Yep. Have a good night. All right. Peace. All right. Yep. Peace.